Hi everyone, welcome to another Wednesday live. On this live broadcast on Facebook, I answer questions from you guys. So this is a question I received from Pinterest, actually. Um, I actually don't always remember to check my Pinterest messages because I never get messages through Pinterest. And um, it's a really good question. So um, this person asked if I went into debt to become a wildlife biologist. So I'm going to tell you my story. And then I am going to tell you what you need to know for this field. So when I started, I did not know the financial situation of this career. And actually, at the time, before I decided I wanted to become a wildlife biologist, I actually was training to be an actress. Um, so I was training to, um, yeah, yeah to be in theater, mostly I wanted to be in films. And that was a very financially risky career. Um, everyone kind of knows that, that there's a lot of, um, that there's a lot of actors that are waiting tables um, when, when it wasn't the pandemic and had a lot of these like temporary jobs to support their dream job of acting. So I went into wildlife biology. I was like, I found my career. This is my love. I wanna go after it. And I was so excited that I thought it was a financially stable career. I was like, because I grew up with, um, my dad grew up uh, poor and he owns his own business. And when his father died when he was um, 18 and he had to take care of his younger brother. So he's always gone up, grown up with this mentality of making sure that, that we all have enough money. So I was not a very financially risky person in, in my, my life. I, I liked, I liked having savings and I didn't like taking risks. So with wildlife biology, I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to a career that is financially secure. And when I graduated from undergrad from college, I decided to take some time off before I became, um, uh, or before I went to graduate school to get my, my wildlife biology PhD. And when I was looking for jobs in, um, after undergraduate, there were internships and um, temporary jobs. Honestly, at that time, I felt like, I mean, this, this was a long time ago. This was 2003 to 2005. I felt like most jobs were paid I do remember seeing volunteer experiences though, and I do remember some opportunities that were like, might as well volunteer, like you get paid like $2 a day in another country. I did see some that you have to pay to go to, but in my opinion, those were more rare at those, at those times. So I had um, three positions. I got paid for all of my positions. My last one was an internship in kenya and that one i was paid in a kenyan salary so i didn't get paid that much and i um also had to pay for half of my airfare to get there so it ended up equaling that i earned nothing for that year i did have room and board i did have food they provided all of that stuff so that was essentially like a year of volunteering so um, before I went to graduate school, I, I did okay financially. I didn't need um, to, to go into debt, to take out loans. All of my experiences were paid for. Um, during college, I made the choice to, um, to stay local because I didn't know, I initially didn't know what I was doing. So I grew up in Buffalo, New York. I decided to go to the state school there which was already pretty cheap if you were a New York resident. Um, I think the cost, the cost of tuition at that time was, I think, 3000 something a semester. And because I was staying local, I thought it was strange for me to dorm there. And UB is actually a really big commuter school. So most people actually commute to school. So I felt like it was weird to dorm. I regretted this decision for a very, very, very long time. I thought I missed out on my college experience because I stayed at home with my parents for college. But the great thing about this in retrospect was that um, I had a scholarship at UB, which is another reason why I chose it. 
And um, so it ended up costing me like a thousand dollars a semester. So my college was super cheap and therefore I didn't have any debt getting a biology degree from the university at Buffalo. And then afterwards, as I mentioned, I had three paid experiences. In graduate school, a lot of people are asking questions about if um, they should pay to go to graduate school, like if they should pay to do this program to become a wildlife biologist or whatever they want to do. For science, if you want a science-based position and you um, are, are going to be conducting research, you need to go into a research-based graduate program. So if you're getting a, a non-thesis master's um, at, for PhD, I think they only have research-based programs. But if you're getting an online master's where you're not doing any um, research component to it, I don't think this is going to help you get a science job in wildlife biology. But the great thing about graduate school for wildlife biologists in or, or and ecologists, zoologists, those in the sciences, is that they actually pay you. So you get a stipend. It's not a lot of money. Um, and in some cases, it is not livable or barely livable. And, uh, and you might have to get a, a side hustle or another job. Um, in my case, it was livable. We got paid 21,000 at the University of Missouri. I was on a fellowship, so that was the, the fellowship amount. If you had a teaching assistant position, you were paid less. And it also depended on what department you were in. So I was in biological sciences. If you were actually in the fisheries and wildlife department, I think you got paid like 15,000, which was not livable. So I was um, lucky, again, in Missouri, I'm, it was a college town, it was super cheap. So I actually made enough money that I did not have to go into debt. I was able to pay my apartment. Um, I didn't have car payments at the time, but I was able to pay for everything. And I actually was even able to save money during that time. So my story is, no, I did not go into debt to become a wildlife biologist. But I want to say two more things. Once I graduated with my PhD, I was really surprised at how little the jobs that I was most competitive for paid. And, um, these these jobs aren't necessarily like like low paying jobs in general. I mean, these are great jobs to have. Just given the amount of experience I had, I had my PhD, I had all this experience before and after my PhD. I did postdocs, and um, basically, I was most most competitive for jobs at the fifty to fifty five thousand dollar range, and. In other fields, given the level of experience that you have, um, comparably, you would be paid probably honestly double that. So even though I didn't go into debt, my my career is, is not lucrative compared to other careers. And um, in the cases of my postdoc, I mean, I didn't make much money at all again. So, um, so if you wanna go into this career, finances are, something you really need to think about. But another but, my situation is is my situation and everyone has their own experience and there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people who go into debt. So I recommend before you go into this career to really look at the jobs you want and how much they cost. And I um, have a podcast about this going into debt with Stephanie Martin. She's another wildlife blogger. She went into debt because she paid to do these volunteer experiences. And I think those are a lot more common now. People call them pay to play experiences because unfortunately, nonprofits, um, universities, we don't always have money. And there are people out there willing to volunteer and it has become such a system that there are so many people willing to volunteer and it's competitive that the the employers who are not actually employing they're they're giving them a, a free they're not paying them but they're giving them a free internship or or sometimes paid internship so that's a system that has been set up 
And it's not right. It's not okay. And we are definitely talking about it in the science community about how to change that because right now, wildlife and conservation and ecology is really only set up for the wealthy. And to be honest, I had a safety net. My dad was always willing to help me out if I had financial problems. Later on, I got married. My husband has a secure, more secure and stable job. So I, um, so I had that in structure and, and there's lots and lots of people who don't have that. So um, what I wanna say is to really, to really look at the jobs out there before you get started and to consider your finances when looking for jobs. So I say this in every single video, but um, use my job tracker tool, which you can download for free. It's a spreadsheet. It helps you organize jobs. It will help you figure out exactly what types of jobs that you want. And you can see how much they pay. If they don't list it, you can contact them and, and ask them, even if you're not applying for the job. They don't know that. So I recommend you do your research. And um, if you are somebody in the, in the ability to hire someone, really try to get them a salary and um we just need to stop accepting this this free this free labor so that we're setting up this exclusive system and it is really hard because when i was a postdoc i applied for all these grants and i didn't get funded so i couldn't afford to fund students and i had students contacting me who were willing to volunteer so it is a really difficult situation i understand it on all sides but this definitely needs to change I also want to mention that I have a free video training right now. This is for January 2020. And if you, um, I'll put a link in here for it. Um, it teaches you the seven steps to find your wildlife biology career path because so many people say they want to become a wildlife biologist, but that means so many different things depending on where you work, at what education level. It's, it's, it's not just like a one and done wildlife biologist. So I highly recommend taking this free training that is available now. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have questions, you can post them underneath. You can submit questions to hello at fancyscientist.com. Thank you so much. Bye.